Right then, welcome back to Iron Sports. Now, uh, the West Indies were humbled, humiliated within three days by world number three ranked England at Edgbaston last week. This in the opening uh, test, a day-night affair. The Caribbean men, well, they went down by an innings and 209 runs. Huge defeat. Donald Trump would say huge, huge, including losing 19 wickets on the final day. First ever uh, for the West Indies. Many cricket pundits have uh, lashed out at the team's performance, labeling the team as the worst they have seen for the past two decades. But are these comments fair? Well, we're going to be looking at those comments and looking at what took place in the first test and looking towards the second test. And we have uh, in the studio with us a former West Indies cricketer, a man who would have played against England and in those very same conditions that the current team is playing in. Wavell Hines joins us in the studio. Wavell, welcome to Iron Sports. Yes, man. Thanks Once for again, having me. Um, there are some who aren't surprised that the West Indies was beaten so badly in the opening test. Um, but your thoughts on the, the margin of defeat and, and just how the team looked? Yes, I'm um, very surprised and disappointed in the, the margin of defeat. Right. Um, of course, they are a very young team, I must say first, and I mean they are trying their best. Given their performance in the UAA against Pakistan, and then they played well against Pakistan and the Caribbean, and also did well against England and the Caribbean, I thought that the performances would have been a lot better. Now, that is on the back of the fact that we played three first-class games before the first test match, including a DNI practice game against Derbyshire Cricket, mm -hmm. um, County Cricket Club. So I expected that the players would have used those... Um, matches you know to get themselves acclimatized of course and just make sure that they are they are training well building on their confidence and going forward if you check the score because i think in this defeat we'll have to ask what happened with the batting for the most part mm -hmm. of course yes questions about we'll the bowling because england um amassed i think 500 and, and, and other runs but the batting had 19 wickets in one day going down so that is in question i think um a couple of the batsmen performed in the warm-up games and I expect that they would have replicated similar positions, similar scores in the test match. Um, apart from Jeremy Blackwood, who scored at half century. Right. Nobody else managed to get across 50. I think Craig Brackley made 40 in the first innings, which but, but, is second innings, which is But let me ask you this. They, they, they got two practice matches. Three. 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 Right. As a matter of fact, this is, this is thought to be more than enough. Right. Because other teams who have visited England have gotten maybe In the one recent some, past, yeah, they have asked one, had one, one or none at all. Or none at all. Right. And, you know, you put into the first test and you have to get going. They had three. But were these matches sufficient? And when you look at these county teams that they played against and, and then you compare these teams with the actual England team, which is very, a very good team, um, was it sufficient enough? Uh, sufficient in terms of what? The, the quality of the opposition? Yeah, yeah the quality of opposition. Because... Um, I, I, I would say that most counties will have maybe take that would have taken out their better players right and given us some brc teams to play. yeah but the fact <laughs> remains that they are still first class cricketers and you are playing in the conditions that you're expected to to, to play a test match and it's called mm -hmm. test match so i think that in itself with a lot of training would have helped the team is inexperienced especially the batting and that may have accounted for a, a few of the dismissals and the, and the way the persons got out so we we will have to also accept that yeah. We prepare ourselves to give these guys another opportunity or give them opportunities to, mm -hmm. to develop and get to the point where they can put out world-class performances in testing conditions. I like that you mentioned that because you've been in England. You've played there. Um, I remember the year 2000. It uh, wasn't the best series for you. You had some umpiring decisions going against you. So, but, so you know all about playing in England. There are a number of LBW and um, bold dismissals which showed up the technical deficiencies of our young batsmen. Um, but what do you think is the major challenge for them playing in England? Or is it, is I it think the conditions, the, the con the conditions not there? The conditions are, are testing and you're playing up against a, a world-class bowling attack. So they're going to be asking questions of your technique on a, mm -hmm. on, a, on a regular basis. Every other ball or every ball is going to be a question asked of your technique. And they're youngsters and, of course, they're trying to... Um, get themselves acquainted with what is required of them in, in the world stage and the test screen. Never mind playing in England, which is probably the most testing conditions of all as it relates to the swinging ball, the moving ball. So um, you will see a lot of LBWs bowl and, and caught behinds because the ball is, ball is going to be doing something laterally. And that in itself will ask questions. And when it's moving lateral at pace, 
and you have bowlers of Jimmy Anderson's quality mm -hmm. and and um, um, Stuart Broad asking those questions with p good pace. It's going to be challenging for them. So I expect them to learn from the first test yeah. and, and, and more themselves. The but, coaching but wait, staff should they, be supporting them. They'll have to and learn I expect quickly. Them to, yes, they'll have to play them. <laughs> Remember though that the first test was also was a day-nighter. Uh -huh. So never mind they played a day-nighter against Derbyshire as the last one we gave before the first uh -huh. test. It was the first time a day-night test match has been played in England. Mm -hmm. And that in itself is also something that people will have as, as, as part of their literature review going forward because nobody in England would have known what it would be like to play, use the pink ball and the lights um, for over a three-day period. Yeah. So they're basically guinea pigs in those kind of situations right. and being inexperienced and being tested But the like England that. players would have had to play under similar conditions. But they the live there. They so used on. it. So I'm, uh, so they've I've, never played under lights either. They've played under lights. In, in, I mean, a test match. No, they've never England, played a test right. match, but they're more experienced than our players. Mm. So we'll have to also put that on the table as, as a part of the basis. Notwithstanding that, we are going to be asking the players to perform better, which is the West Indians. We always want them to perform better. Right, speaking but we have of to make sure that we state those facts as... As, as they are, they are True. the players facts, are playing but the not excuses. Day. No, no, just right. stating the facts. All right, now speaking of players, no, there was a player amnesty recently, yeah. um, and uh, some senior players who would have had some issues with the board, they have been allowed to come back and so on. Um, there was no, there's no Darren Bravo in this squad, for instance, and um, a, f a few of them have made themselves unavailable for the ODI series. Uh, Pollard, for instance, he's out too. Um, no mention of why, but. Your thoughts on whether or not these players would have made a difference? If, for instance, something cavalier had happened and they brought them in f uh, for the Test Series, for instance? Well, um, there are the, players who are pretty experienced, they have, at least in cricket in itself. Um, a couple of them have not played Test matches, a couple of them have played little or no Test matches, and a couple have played Test matches, they like Dwayne Bravo, where right. we would have played Test match up maybe seven years ago. He right. played his last Test match in, I think, 2010. 2010. Yeah, yeah. Right, so that has been a while. But he's experienced, and I'm sure that he would have made it the, the, the difference. Um, however, the preparation that they will need to play Test match cricket right. certainly won't be a, a bunch of T20s. They will right, get into right. first class cricket, that because true. that's the nature of the game. You have to get in it, prepare your mind, your body. And to go and execute the technique and the temperament which is required for test matches is not necessarily the mm -hmm. same for, for white ball cricket, ODI, right. or T20. Right. But um, the play amnesty is a good thing. I think we, we thought about it long and hard. And we thought that we wanted to have the best West Indian players um, available to the selectors for, 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 for our selection. Never, no, don't forget that the, the, the old policy, selection policy is something that we inherited right. as we ad administrate at WIPA. And we thought that while it had its value, it has its value and had its value when it was um, conceptualized right. in the, maybe in the 80s or 90s. Yeah. It's and its survey purpose now. then, right. as it is, the landscape of the game has changed. So right. it, it is not necessarily serving the game best and it does not enhance or propel development in a holistic manner in, in this current yeah. um, um, and, and, and atmosphere. And I, I personally like the player amnesty move. Right. But is it a case that a few of the players, they, they, despite them being given an amnesty, won't take up the offer because that's the other thing yes they're being given that amnesty to come back but no it's a case of whether or not a few of them will actually take up the offer well that's a personal decision you know and that's that will have to stay with the players so of course more, all West Indians will want to have the best players the best possible 11 on the, on the field according to the version of the game so that's a decision that the players will have to make what is what is very clear though is that they have been given an opportunity right. to play um, as the, the, the release have not notified the public is that um, players were contacted and they have indicated for mm. different varying reasons why they are not available. And those are personal decisions that we have to respect. All right, time is against us. Um, the the, the two-tier system, um, the heavy defeat has once again opened up that debate. Uh, Michael Holding, um, um, the former England captain Michael Vaughan, they've suggested that it's time for the two-tier system. Um, the ICC had put it to, to rest last year, but 2019 it could be revisited. Your thoughts on Seeing this West Indies team, whether it's time now for that two-tier system wherein a team like the West Indies would be in the second division, for instance, playing against the likes of Zimbabwe and, and Bangladesh in order to, you know, be better prepared for test cricket. Um, I, I, while I won't um, shoot it down in, in its entirety because I don't know on, on all the bases of which it has mm. been um, mooted, right. but I'll say though, before we get there, I think the ICC needs to think about the, equi the equity, you know, how they um, share around the resources for international cricket. And you have the, the last um, resource revenue sharing model doesn't necessarily reflect a, a, a fairness in how it has been distributed. Right. The Indians, the Australians, and English have gotten a lion's share of the pie, and the, and the remaining amount goes to 
the other six or seven nations. I don't think that will create equity and create um, that sort of um, resources that we need. Resources that we need to, right. to bring ourselves up to the standards and play them out a first class game and a team tours so that our players can get developed yeah. in a in a in a very professional and, and first class manner so that they can compete at the international stage. So before we get to the two tier system, let yeah. us create some equity first as right. to how we disperse the resources so yeah. that players and the, the, the region can develop yeah. so that um, development, real development can take place right. on a consistent basis. And innings break is coming up, a quick one. Um, the second test, would you make any changes? Well, I'm not close enough to the action. It's in England and the conditions are different. We have to use what's happening in the nets and how persons are traveling in terms of the tour and how they manage themselves. So it's very difficult. But I, it is very difficult to also just give a guy a test match and just leave him out in difficult conditions right. as well. Because in the cold. you're doing the same thing to the guy who's replacing him. He's just getting his first test. So I will give everybody a, a, another go. Mm -hmm. um, interesting to see that Chan and Gabriel is not playing. He has been our, our better fastball over the last eight to ten months. So hopefully he can get fit and get in the squad and give mm -hmm. our team some firepower so that we can reduce the margin in terms of what, what England have scored in the first innings of, of the last test match. All right, Wavell. Well, an innings break is upon us, so we must go. Wavell Hines, yeah, thank you thanks so thanks very much for joining yes. us here on Iron Sports. Right then.